Hello, welcome. This is the second video in the series of History of Entrepreneurship. And we're going to continue with the stewardship and discipleship discussion. While Adam was given stewardship over the garden, then the earth, Jesus often spoke of taking care of those the Father has given to him, the sheep, his flock. In his most intimate and concerned prayers in his last days, he expresses exactly the soul of a shepherd that is given stewardship over its flock. My most significant question for you today is, are you following Adam's footsteps? Or Jesus's? Are you taking care of the earth or are you taking care of God's people? I am not insinuating here that the earth isn't worthwhile to take care of for other for after all it is our home and we need it to be healthy but and it is God's creation which we have been given responsibility over but just as the mother is given her children to take care of, they will care for the house and garden, the yard and the cooking. But she was not sent to be the mother of the house, the yard, the garden and the kitchen. She is taking care of those things because she is taking care of the health of the, her children. She is clearly the steward of her family therefore also its dwelling place. So let's evaluate your work from this perspective today. Are you taking care of the things of the world or caring for the people of God? For if you are taking care of the people of God, you will be taking care of all the things that many needs require. But you are not sent to fix issues you are sent to give solutions to people that betters their experience in life, helps them grow, helps them to come to know Jesus. Things do not bear fruit to glorify the Lord. People do. Christian entrepreneurship will always flow into the reverse of evangelism and church planting. Even though there is a very narrow gate to pass on the way, it is highly customized to the steward's gifts and personality. Anyone can be a good steward over the soul of others. God qualifies you for the job by guiding you to your opportunity. Opportunity for action is a call for action. And the opportunity itself qualifies you for action. People and life is made of not years, but moments. Just change someone's experience by bringing them the pure word of Jesus right now. Then you can walk away and breathe. We are only required to serve one moment at a time, but don't underestimate those moments. Practiced often enough, they do build up. They become signposts for others on the highways of eternity. And here, the most significant question in a Christian's life justifiably arises. How do you take care of the people of God? And how do you know whom did he entrust with your stewardship? What can you offer? When God brings the needy before you, he is giving you the opportunity. So that is the definition of whom you are ought to serve. If God brings you the needy to you, you have the means to take care of him, not only material, but spiritual and biblical preparedness. The Holy Spirit is there for inspiration. Taking care of people always begins with taking care of the most early. How to raise youth under your care 
taking the book of Proverbs entirely, how to take care of the elderly, the sick, the weak, read book of Luke entirely, how to take care of the workers, the office holders, the weary, the financially disenfranchised, read the book of Matthew entirely, how to take care of your disciples, students, subordinates, congregation, read the book of John entirely. But most importantly, to be a good steward, accept the Bible as your authority, the Torah as instruction, and the New Testament as the instruction how to study the instruction of the Torah. Not your instincts and intuition, though they are also have their roles, but the ultimate authority will always be the Word of God. Jesus had an uncompromised and unhindered commitment to the Torah, the only existing part of the Bible in his time. He demonstrates over and over again that there is true power in the Word of God and that he would be using those words every day for making a difference around himself and us using it for healing, teaching, or self-correction, protection, and manifestation. He relies on the Word of God entirely, therefore revealing its divine power, especially in his interactions with Satan. Depends, because he depends on the source of that Word, which is him and the Father, therefore revealing its love that cares and provides and for all our needs. He identifies the word as truth that he is even willing to give his life for. If you take the word as such authority in your life, what are the things that would have to fall away and the things that would have to be incorporated? Historical accounts and philosophers downright the Bible as a myth or a symbols of collective consciousness. Well, but you know way better than that because you know a herd of death and you know that death isn't a myth nor a symbol of collective fears of our own end. Death is reality. And how could such harsh reality be overcome by something that is only a myth, a philosophy, or a symbol. It could certainly not be able to do so. Death had to be overcome by an even greater reality than death itself. And that is life empowered by the Creator God Himself, a life not lived in secret, but publicly proclaimed demonstration of what He believed in. And now it is your turn. Please read this Bible text at the end of the transcript of this video and refer to the worksheet for deepening your experience with the um, subject of stewardship and discipleship. I hope you will have enjoyed this presentation and the next video you will be looking for is going to the first historical video. Aloha.